As the Joker War rages around the Dark Knight, the only friends Bruce Wayne has left may also be his enemies. All this and more on the pages of Batman number 97. Let's hop on in together and find out what happens next, shall we? Alrighty then, so as the comic opens up, we actually check on in with Punchline. Her and the Underbroker are overseeing a massive shipment of chemicals into Gotham Harbor. These party favors, we find out, are bound for Ace Chemical, important ingredients in the Joker's brand new Joker toxin that he hopes to unleash on Gotham City as his final joke. There's just one teeny tiny problem with all of this, and that is a bunch of the clown henchmen are actually afraid to drive through the Narrows. No, it's not Batman they're afraid of. After all, they're armed to the teeth and Batman doesn't kill. No, there's a new player on the board now, someone who's not afraid to take life, and that person is the mysterious Clown Hunter. A masked young man who has been making hell for Joker's forces all over Gotham City. In fact, we see a very fun scene wherein he traps two clowns inside a Batmobile and says, Oh, it's time for my anti-clown serum. Here's the punchline, it's just gasoline. I don't know about you, but whenever a new comic character hits the scene, it's always a big deal for me for what kind of voice I'm going to read their captions in. And for Clown Hunter, well, I think I found just the perfect voice. It's someone who maybe hates clowns as much as he does. Clown man. Now back over with Batman, he's still at the Monarch Theater and things are not going good for him. His mind is still being ravaged by the Joker toxin that he was shot up with in the previous issue. And now he's besieged by an army of the dead, but not just any dead, a bunch of people that the Joker has already killed once. Mr. J goes on a pretty entertaining monologue where he asks Batman, which of these dead people do you think would be more offended? The people whom Batman let die early on in his career when he wasn't exactly sure what the Joker was made of were the people who have died more recently when Batman should definitely have known what he was up against. This scene goes from horrifying to extra horrifying when Batman's messed up mind starts seeing all of these dead people rushing him as the Joker. With his back against the wall though, Batman decides to do something rather interesting. After all, all bats should be able to fight blind and if Bruce can't trust his own vision right now, he'll simply just take it away. And you know what? This ballsy gamble actually ends up paying off. Well, kinda sorta. Batman just narrowly manages to escape the Monarch Theater, and he probably would have died in the streets too if Harley didn't pick him up. Hey, here's a question that just hits me. Where is Damien? His father and his city are under siege right now, and here's Harley Quinn being a better sidekick than he's been in years. Now, where exactly is the Joker right now? Well, he's living the high life on Bruce Wayne's money. Oh my god, look at that Ric Flair robe, that green Europe European Speedo, this is everything that Jared Leto's movie Joker aspired to be but never could be. Punchline gets her boss and boyfriend up to speed on everything that's happening in the city, including what's going down with Clown Hunter. What's truly surprising is that the Joker isn't mad at the whole Clown Hunter business. In fact, he's stoked. Joker says that in the old days, any person in Gotham who put on a costume would always follow the Batman's playbook, but this new kid is killing people, meaning he knows that the only rules are no rules at all anymore. In short, Joker takes this to mean his chaos is winning and bleeding into every aspect of Gotham life. The only person who is not happy here is Punchline. To put it quite frankly, she doesn't get the joke, doesn't get the relationship between Batman and the Joker. He makes a move, then the Dark Knight makes a move. It's a dance they've been doing forever, but this millennial is just so impatient, don't you know? Now, Harley actually manages to spirit Batman away to a place called Eden, a special little garden that Poison Ivy had actually put to together for Harley when her and the Joker were going through a rough spot. Again, showcasing that Batman may think he knows his city pretty damn well, but despite his best efforts, he's always stumbling across new little corners like this one. Harley, who again has just been so freaking helpful since this story began, realized what was wrong with Batman and went to work trying to make him some sort of toxin antidote. It makes sense, she is a doctor after all and probably has a pretty good knowledge of Joker venom. The only problem with this antidote is is that Batman's state of mind is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Basically, one last big trip before the bitter end. And because Bruce just cannot catch himself a break during the last couple days, his final great hallucination that he'll be forced to overcome manifests as, well, Alfred. And it's on that note right there, the comic comes to a close. And so that was Batman issue number 97, everybody. And once again, I continue to enjoy what Tynan is doing with Joker War here. He continues to be good to his word about how, yeah, you've probably seen seen a story like this before, but probably haven't seen it with all these different caveats and angles. 
There'll always be something compelling to me about a Batman who's lost his money, his friends, his gadgets, and yet continues to fight the good fight anyway just because that's what's in him. I'm also really interested to see more about Clown Hunter, even though with only a few more issues left to go in this Joker War story, they better kick in the turbos to actually explain who and what his deal is. Ultimately, I'd feel comfortable giving this one an 8 out of 10. It continues to move along at a good pace, and I'm definitely enjoying where the story is going from here. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content, too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and, well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.